Okay, what is this? This is an LED array uh, mounted for a heatsink. And it has an incredible rating of 14,400 lumens. Uh, it dissipates 100 real watts of power. Um, to give you some sort of scale to that, uh, here's a 60 watt equivalency bulb, uh, produces 800 lumens. You would need 17 and a half of these to create the same amount of light output, apparently, that this one is rated for. So, this video uh, is going to look at this LED and uh, practical ways of cooling it because um, this truly does actually uh, consume 100 watts. Now this heat sink actually is far too small for that uh, and uh, we're going to look at a uh, technique called liquid cooling which is definitely a very old and very interesting way of keeping things running at high power levels. Okay, uh, I've turned the module on uh, just with the air cooling of the heat sink. Uh, well, let me just turn the bulb off. It's just so bright. <laughs> Poor camera's struggling there. You can see it was going up to 160 degrees centigrade on the surface of these LEDs, and they simply wouldn't last very long. So, not a huge surprise here, because obviously this is not much uh, metal here. Uh, just to try uh, uh, cooling with a fan, uh, we'll, we'll do that next. Uh, I suspect we'll find out that even a fan, actually, with a small heat sink, uh, will struggle to cool this. Okay, so um, here we have a scenario with a, a fan below pushing air onto the heat sink. Uh, a little thermocouple just touching the top of the uh, the phosphor and of course you can see the display. I'll turn on the fan and of course you'll see this is the first problem with trying to use this with the fan, it's just going to be too noisy. And uh, then we'll bring on the LED. Okay, uh, it's been running for a bit here, let me just uh, turn off the uh, turn off both these things. Woo, that's loud. Um, with this fan, uh, the steady te temperature at the top of the LED is around about 90 degrees centigrade. It's not bad, actually. That would um, be well within getting a reasonable service life from the LEDs. Obviously, since I'm looking for a light that's for uh, essentially movie making, uh, far too um, far too noisy. Okay, uh, obviously a little plastic container uh, to contain the mineral, and uh, we'll just cover the surface of the, uh, the uh, LED. And uh, what let's do, of course, is it'll provide a uh, very rapid tr heat transfer from the LED uh, to the surrounding fluid. Uh, liquids obviously have a thermal conductivity uh, 10 times out of air at least, and um, that'll allow the air heat to be drawn away rapidly from the LED. So I'll get the same thermocouple here, and um, we'll uh, turn the LED on, and uh, we'll see what the surface the LED uh, heats to. Okay, so um, when I just had the... Um, LED and the fluid uh, without any sort of circulation, uh, the heat still continued to build up without limit essentially. Wasn't getting enough circulatory motion set up in the fluid. Uh, obviously, the only way to solve that is just simply to, to stir it up and uh, a fan. And uh, yeah, fans actually also run just fine in fluids usually. Okay, so you look close to the fans now, setting up a circulatory motion is basically um, drawing fluid in and running it around. So. Uh, this should help with the, uh, the temperature buildup on the uh, LED here, so we'll just turn it back on uh, and measure the temperature on the uh, LED. Okay, so it's been running for quite some time now, and you can see the uh, temperature 50 degrees centigrade on the uh, LED matrix. It's still rising upwards. Of course, the problem there is now that the fluid itself can't reject heat into the environment fast enough. And that's not a surprise, obviously, a, a plastic container like this isn't a really great... Um, a heat sink. So, next step is to, uh, to continue the experiment basically, though, but build on the enclosure which holds the mineral oil a um, um, another heat sink which will reject the heat to the air. Okay, so here's the uh, final configuration of the uh, cooling system for this particular LED. Uh, it works well, uh, not a huge surprise here, it's pretty well established engineering. Uh, I have the module, of course, uh, now in an acrylic tank, and you can see a heat sink in the back here. And uh, there's a little fan wh whizzing away, uh, creating a, a current around the module. Um, I'm going to turn it on, put 100 watts on this module. The, the top of the uh, LED array doesn't get much past 70 degrees centigrade. That's great. Uh, obviously a very uh, functional number. Uh, the main difference between the one we saw last, the little plastic container, and this one, of course, is the metal heat sink back here. Um, and what's going on, of course, is the LEDs heat up the fluid, and then the fluid then has to take that heat to the outside. Um, the heat sink here helps a great deal because uh, the air then can just passively run past it and, and draw the heat away and it reaches a, th a thermal equilibrium of about, 30, uh, about 
40 degrees, well, almost 50 degrees above ambient, so that's not bad. So, um, it's, uh, it looks funny, but it's actually a very practical way of cooling extremely high point sources of light. Um, I must admit, though, uh, in my construction of my light boxes, maybe a single 100 watt unit uh, is a little bit uh, goofy, and perhaps I should be looking at something like an array of 10 watts on an aluminum array. So.